Hello again, okay, here in this video, yeah, profile of a psychopath. Now, why am I doing this, okay? Why am I going to say it's profile of a psychopath? Well, underneath this video and more, you can read what's there. It's very true, okay? I also got something to show you. But before I do, I want you to think about a few things, okay? In today's society, the way people treat each other, okay? The ultimate selfishness, how people are about themselves. It's no lie. If you look around you, you see people all about themselves anyhow, don't you? That's right. And let's give an example of like people up online on the computer. People who, in my opinion, probably should have law enforcement show up at the door and take the computer from them. Not be allowed to have a computer because they're not grown up enough to possess a computer because they think it's all right to be a troll. That's right. Let's give an example. The condom man. That's right. Robert Wilbur. Brandon Kirk. Let's use him for an example because he's actually a pretty good example of the profile of a psychopath because basically that's what he is. Okay, There's no lie about that. Yeah, okay, and I can say that for good reasoning, okay? And I can say that and be honest about it because, see, I actually care about other people. That's why I do what I do. Okay? I really do. And generally, I care about other people and I understand their feelings and their emotions. Overall, because I understand that and I feel it in my own heart, I care about them and I strive to try to help people to the best of my ability, anyhow. But people like uh, the condom man there, Robert Wilbur, uh, Brandon Kirk, whatever his real name should be, he don't strive to help people. He just he strives to hurt people because he gets a sick, sadistic power trip out of what he's doing. But he also demonstrates one thing for sure, that he is a psychopath, that he definitely has major mental issues, okay? And I'll say that openly because I can pretty much back that. But here's a gal who's talking about a mother that was a psychopath who killed her children. Yep, she shot and killed kids, okay? But anyhow, she uh, hurts her kids. And then she turns around and she does the typical thing. She looks for somebody else to blame it on to. And I see a lot of that going on in today's society. Not that's why we see a lot of mothers killing the kids, don't we? Okay? But let's get off the killing your kids for a moment. Let's think about today's society. People doing stuff and flipping the truth around to blame it on to somebody else. And don't matter what it is. They do it, and they don't have to own up to their own responsibilities because they can flip the buck and pass what they're doing on to somebody else, and they feel no shame in doing it. They feel no remorse. They don't feel no emotions towards anybody. Anyhow, uh, we see a whole lot of that going on in today's society everywhere we look. It's pure evil. It really is. It's pure evil. So with that being said... I got something I want to show you here. Okay, so watch this and I'll be right back with you. You have watched Diane as she explains in these interviews um, what happened that night in her version right. of events. What's your clinical opinion as you watch her? Um, my clinical opinion is that she's a psychopath. And she demonstrates all of the qualities of a psychopath. Okay. Given your assessment of the tape, and the court's assessment that she was a sociopath, a narcissist with a histrionic personality. What kind of person are we talking about? Well, let's start with the dominant one, which is the sociopath. A sociopath is somebody who has a fundamental inability to relate to themselves. When you are growing up, when you are a little kid, you learn how to identify emotions in part because you see other people and you recognize those emotions in yourself and you begin to develop an ability to understand what it feels like to feel happy and sad and then you can recognize that in others so that um, when you see somebody in distress you have an empathic response meaning you feel bad by seeing somebody who feels bad okay now did you make sense out of what she said there she's a hundred percent right on cue she knows what she's talking about no lie. She knows exactly what she's talking about. And that is the facts. When you grow up, you recognize your feelings, your behaviors, and uh, you recognize it in other people. And you feel bad when 
somebody else is feeling something or something happened to somebody else or they're talking about something that's depressing and you recognize them feelings yourself and it makes you feel bad too. But, and you feel bad over that, okay? And that's generally what happens with me and that's where I get my ability, that's where I want to strive to try to help other people or to be there to support other people, okay? And that would be the difference between um, me and people who actually care about other people and the condom man, Rubber Wilbur. See, he don't recognize that, okay? And that's obvious, since he don't feel what other people feels because what he feels it, what he does is he strives to come at you, make a bold faced lie up to slander you to furtherly try to degrade you, to try to hurt you in any way he can. Okay? That's what he does. Okay? And that's why I want to point that out. Now, yeah, like I said, I'm using him for the example. Okay? But if I look around online, you find lots of people online doing this. And if I look around on society, you won't see as many people bold facially openly in your face on society pulling the behavior that you recognize from people like Brandon Kirk online and the reason you don't see it is because they know that if they've done what they're doing to somebody's face in real life they would probably be in the hospital with their teeth in their stomach and broken ribs but at home they can hide behind their PC they can hide behind the phone. They can be behind a keyboard. They don't have to put themselves on cam so you don't recognize their face. You won't know who they are. They can hide like the cowards they are, like Brendan Kirk. Okay, they can hide because they know in reality that they're a coward, okay? But they also demonstrate the one thing that I'm showing you here. They demonstrate their ability to be, you know, psychopaths. They actually are mentally disabled. They're psychopaths, okay? Because in reality, they can't handle their own life. They have things and issues going on in their life, maybe like with TFL, for example. Uh, Brandon Kirk, see, he probably lives TFL because the majority of everybody out here will live TFL one time or another in their life. And his problem with it is he don't want to own up to it because that means he has to face up to something he's going through himself. And he can't go around it. That's right. He can't try to get around it. But anyhow, watch up. He's got some more to say. So sociopath doesn't feel empathy? A sociopath does not feel empathy. Beyond that, so that's one, that's the shallow end of the spectrum of sociopathy. The deeper end, which is where I think Diane Downs um, lives, is toward callousness. There's that, a spectrum of lack of empathy toward callousness. And that is the core feature of a psychopath or a sociopath is somebody who cannot identify with another person's feelings. Yeah, somebody that can't identify with another person's feelings or they don't want to identify with another person's feelings because it bothers them. That's why they don't want to identify with another human being's feelings because they don't want to feel the same feeling inside. Because they're trying to get around it. Do you see what I'm saying here? Because they do everything they can to get around it so they don't have to feel it. Because they don't want to feel it. Because if they had to feel it, they might have to, what? They might have to actually care for somebody other than themselves? You mean you might actually have to care about another human being? You couldn't be all about yourself, number one? only care about number one? Do you follow what I'm saying? That's what's going on in today's society. Look around you. Nobody cares about nobody no more. They only care about number one, themselves. Then you wonder why there's so many times, uh, so much domestic abuse in relationships. You wonder why uh, it happened again, and then it happened again, and it happened again. You wonder why that happened, right? You wonder why we're in a war right now killing innocent people. 
You wonder why a handful of people own all the wealth and so many people live in poverty. You wonder, don't you? You wonder why. Why is because we fail to care for other people. That's why. Because you fail. You fail to care about other people. You fail to care about their emotions, their feelings, their wants, or their needs. And when somebody's going through something, like TFL, for example, and you know that you're experiencing this stuff yourself, you don't want to feel that feeling. You don't want to own up to it. It's too much for you. You can't handle it. And so you try to dodge it. You try to go around it. Or you attack the person who's trying to reach out and help other people. Because you recognize what they're talking about. Because you're going through it yourself. And so rather than use this and care about other people and think about, wow, this is happening to me. And come together with other people and talk about it and look for solutions. To try to get people to recognize, do on to one as you want done on to yourself. To try to get people to care about other people. And because something's happening with somebody and they're talking about something maybe you've never experienced yet in your life. Or they've seen something you didn't see, so you don't believe them immediately because you didn't see it. Does that mean they're lying? No, it doesn't. But we're in a society where lies become the norm, isn't it? That's right. And what makes me laugh and fall out of my chair there is the fact that the lies become so norm to you people, but at the same time, you people want to lie, but you don't want to be lied to. You can't have it both ways. It can't be, it's normal to lie. I want to lie. Because it's norm, I want to fit in. And then turn around and say, but I don't want to be lied to. It don't work that way. Yes, truth can be hard. Sometimes truth can hurt. But you should follow truth and want truth. Lying will lead you to your own death. That's where lying will get you. How do you think governments have repeated what they've done over and over, bankers, throughout the years, and the wars that we've been in throughout the hundreds of years, and everything keeps replaying itself over and over and over? Because you didn't strive for truth. You wanted lies. And them lies got you dead. Watch out. And they also can't identify um, with their own feelings, but they can't make a distinction between things that to a regular person seem perfectly uh, understandable. They don't, can't make a rank order of murder is worse than stealing, is worse than kicking somebody in the street. And that she shows that so dramatically when she's talking about watching the blood come out of her little girl's mouth. and you know, hearing the gurgling, and then transitions to, well, I was hurt too. I couldn't tie my shoe for I don't know how long. And every time I have to look at that ugly scar, she has no affective, no emotional connection to her kids at all. Another thing that distinguishes psychopaths is um, that they don't feel stress. They don't, be, they don't feel anxious. They don't generally feel depressed. So lying isn't a problem for them. So lying isn't a problem for them. They externalize blame. They don't feel guilt. There you go. Now, don't that sound like the majority of our world nowadays? Doesn't that really sound like the majority of our world? So my conclusion is, is unfortunately, because of evil, and because of our ability to not care about other people, our ability to only care about number one, and our ability to get a sick power trip off of hurting other people like trolls do, like the condom man. So my conclusion comes down to this. The majority of our society has become psychopathic. You better wake up, people, and start caring for other people. You become a simple genius. Next video, you have a good one.